and just picturing, you know, a, a skinny, uh, gangly George, <laughs> Dill, you know, 15 years old riding a horse up Keystone, uh, yeah. the looks that he would get would be hilarious. All right, it's time for another episode of Cash's Top 5. Joining me today, co-host of the Query and Schultz Sports Program on ISC Sports Network. He's the co-host of the Doyle and Derek podcast with Indianapolis Stars' Greg Doyle, a regular contributor to the Indianapolis Monthly Magazine, and despite his love for the 90s Knicks, one of my favorite follows on Twitter, Derek Schultz. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up, man? I'm excited about doing this, so thanks so much for having me on your show. Oh, of course. Uh, The whole reason to do the top five is to talk about literally anything and everything. And I know we're both pretty big sports nuts. You know, we have other interests, but I kind of figured if I, you know, I wanted to have you on, we were probably going to do something sports related, at least for the first time. So what are we doing today? Yeah, let's go ahead and stay in my wheelhouse, I guess. And I thought a good topic would be top five Indianapolis athletes of all time. Uh, At least I I was kind of looking at it in the modern era because I'm 38 years old. I know you're a little bit younger than that. So I wanted to make sure that we stayed somewhat in the realm of, of where we have some understanding of the impact of some of these figures. Sure. Yeah. When I was doing some research, I was looking up like peekaboo Veach or whatever his name was baseball yeah. player from the turn of the century I was like great nickname I don't know that I can pick him though and <laughs> I, it's not athletes who worked in Indianapolis these are athletes from Indianapolis that went on to have pro careers Is correct that's kind of how I took it oh see I, I took it as just uh, a little bit I, my list is kind of a combination of both of those things um, okay but you know what it, it, I think it would be interesting if you know, we did touch on, I guess, some people that were actually from here. You know, what's weird, Cash, is for being a, a, a big city, there really aren't a lot of famous people from Indianapolis. Like, you think even, like, Louisville down the road has Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we have we have Kurt Vonnegut and Letterman and then <laughs> I, Jane Pauley. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. who else yeah. really is there? Uh, no, that's true. Well, my list will probably look a little different than yours because I went with strictly athletes from Indianapolis. Gotcha. But I'm uh, excited be- to talk about those athletes too. So that's good. Well, yeah. And to me, to be fair, my list, if I did uh, a combination of the both, my number one would be the entire 2006 Colts team. My number two would be the entire 1998 <laughs> Pacers. So like, I yeah. got to be kind of fair. So I picked only Indianapolis athletes. So these are our top five indie athletes of all time. Uh, we'll go ahead and get it started. Who do you got at number five? With number five, and I was looking kind of more, I I wanted to do a combination of both skill, legacy, and how beloved they were. Because if we were just talking about great players and stats and things like that, Marvin Mm -hmm. Harrison, for instance, would absolutely be on the list. But Marvin Harrison just isn't a beloved figure here. He's just not. He was kind of icy with the media and we never really got to know him very well off the field. In fact, some people question whether they wanted to know him off the field with some of the <laughs> some of the stuff that may or may not have happened in that little neighborhood in Philadelphia that he ran. Uh-huh. But yeah. um, number five to me, because I, I think you can argue that he was the second most popular cult of the era. And in some circles was the most popular. I, t- I talked to many people who said this was their favorite athlete, even though Peyton Manning was clearly king. Um, number five, I put Reggie Wayne. Um, great pick not a, not a guy from here from the new orleans area of course went and starred at miami before being yep. a first round pick of the colts in 2001 and i think just really embraced the city and and just got it you know what i mean like I- indiana all places are like this but indiana especially and, and i know this because i'm not from here it's really important for people here to know that people who aren't from here, who are now here, love it here, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. And, yes, yeah. my and hatred I, I for Reggie, Paul George now. <laughs> that's <laughs> because right. Because yeah. he spurned Perfect Indy. Perfect example of a guy that just never really embraced it here, and it, it felt yeah. like he was always an outsider. Reggie felt like, you know, quote, unquote, one of us. So, uh, and, you know, the fact is he's a, a borderline Hall of Fame player. I do think eventually he'll get in. Um and, and so he had a great career on the field as well. So he warrants inclusion on this list just because of what he was able to do on the field. But his legacy and, and just the beloved nature of number 87, I, I had to include him in my top five. 
That's a great pick. I mean, I absolutely love Reggie Wayne. Uh, he's probably one of my all-time favorite Colts as well. Um, and Indianapolis athletes in general. Uh, I think there's a Midwestern vibe that they want their athletes to, you know, be blue collar like it is here, you know, kind of have a workmanlike approach. And wide receiver is usually seen as a diva position while, and Reggie kind of got to do both. You know, he got to have the big splashy entrances at training camp, you know, the yep. helicopter, the the Indy car, the under construction. The, I mean, it was, I look forward to that every off season, like what's Reggie, how is he going to arrive at training camp? But then he was like the guy with the lunch pail. I'm going to work. We got work to do. And to be able to do both, uh, Love that guy. That's a great pick. Um, so given what I said, I picked athletes that are strictly from Indianapolis. Uh, I was, I had, a, I've got a couple honorable mentions. I think you'll like when we talk about this at the end, but my number five, he's a, he's a, obviously a local guy. Um, he's helped out my fantasy team from time to time. You know, if I'm in a pinch, I, you know, I've drafted him a couple of times uh, from cathedral, my number five Colts, Jack Doyle. Yeah, uh, Jack Doyle is a great pick. And what, what I love about Jack Doyle's story was that he, he's not somebody that was all world, that was always destined to be great. Like even in high school, I think people knew who he was, but he wasn't like James Banks or Jeff George. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one of these like, oh my God, he's going to be an all pro level sort of player, or a, a top end NFL draft pick. Um, if I'm not mistaken, ended up at Western Kentucky. Yeah, Hilltopper. And, which, yeah, which has been a decent program. But then I, I remember we had a listener named Turnbuckle Bill. That's not his actual name. Oh, and uh, I know, I know like, Turnbuckle. He tried stand up a couple of times. It was that's right. It was, it was yeah. interesting. <laughs> uh, he interesting is a great way to describe Bill. Yeah. Anyway, um, he lived over on the east side, and he's like, hey, you know, they, there's this guy that they brought in. He played at Cathedral named Jack Doyle, and I think he's got a real chance. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, man. You know, I was hoping Darren Evans would make it here. You know what I mean? But <laughs> you're right. Yeah. You know, but he, yeah, whatever. He's a practice squad guy. He's not going to stick around. And for him to do as well as he's done, um, is is fantastic. He's just such an easy guy to to root for. And I would love for him to be a career cult. That'd be a ama an amazing story. Yeah. Um. It. I make this pick even though it bugs my dad who. It likes Jack Doyle, but it pisses him off every game because they do their local prep. You know, the national broadcasters of the Colts games aren't from here usually. And so they at least once a game, you know, oh, the hometown boy, oh, the hometown kid. They always mention the hometown boy, Jack Doyle. And my dad's like, we get it already. He's from here. We know. I'm like, dad, <laughs> they don't care that you've heard this every week. They're just doing their thing. But uh, so while that bugs him, I had to pick him at number five. So I've got Jack Doyle. Yeah, uh, I love that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving along. Who do you have at number four? Uh, number four, and I'm pretty sure that this guy is going to be on your list because I think if you're making a list of the athletes that are actually from here, mm -hmm. he might be number one uh, or at least has an argument to number one. Um, he's a classic one of those guys that was ahead of his time and could play in any era, which is really hard to do, especially when we talk about the NBA. But and just a wonderful human being as well. Couldn't be a nicer guy. Um, number four on my list is George McGinnis. Okay, um, yeah. great, great player, a state champion on a heralded and historic uh, Indianapolis Washington team. Then, of course, went on to IU where he was one and done before one and done was really a thing. Had one year at Indiana and was amazing. And then went on to star in the NBA and ABA. Uh, first with the with the Pacers in the ABA, and then later on. Uh, Philadelphia and a couple of other stops in the NBA. Uh, I think Denver was another one where mm -hmm. he was also an, an all-star player and a, a long wait for him for the Naismith basketball hall of fame, but did eventually make it in a couple of years ago, you know, six, eight, six, nine could handle the ball, could shoot, could pass, could defend, could do a little bit of everything. He was kind of a unicorn of sorts and just a, a really amazing basketball legacy. And, and what's great about it is that born here, high school star here, college star here, pro star here. There's a very small list of players in any sport who can stake that claim and say that every rung of the ladder that they climbed was here somewhere in the state of Indiana, like George McGinnis. And was that successful doing it? Um, yeah. You know, he had the stats to back it up. And it's a shame that the ABA players don't get the love uh, that they rightfully should. You know, I think maybe Dr. J and I guess uh, Iceman, 
George Gervin would be the only ones that I, th I can think of that are given the respect of how good they were. And I think a lot of that's because they were able to propel that to stellar NBA careers. Uh, but McGinnis is just one of those that was really damn good. Um, and yeah, it's, it's too bad that he played in the era that he did. It's obviously a little before our time. Um, so a lot of it is watching tape and, and hearing the stories, but absolutely uh, an all-timer. Uh, and it's cool that he's from Indianapolis because I hear the, uh, I don't know if this guy will come up on your list a little further down, uh, uh, the big O, Oscar Robertson from Tennessee. Technically, he grew up here. So there's sure. always a bit of a, uh, there's always that Indianapolis, well, they're not really from here. It's like, calm down, buddy. Um, <laughs> so, okay, strong picks. You got Reggie Wayne at five. You've got uh, George McGinnis at number four. My number four for you, uh, I don't know that you're going to like, I think you're going to appreciate the haterade that is sprinkled all over this one uh, because I admittedly never watched him when he was in high school. He's another Cathedral Irish, just like Jack Doyle. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, my number four is Matthias Kiwanuka. Yeah, you know, another guy who I really like who has an, an interesting story and, and a background and – I think was another guy like Doyle. I, you know, Matthias was much more of a high profile player than Jack Doyle was at Cathedral. Like people, you right. know, he, he went to Boston College. He was a major division one athlete. And, and I, I think there were people that were thinking that he could be an NFL player. But it, it wasn't until, you know, he got selected in the first round by the Giants that, that I think people really bought on to, hey, look at, wow, Matthias Kiwanuka, first round NFL pick. And even though injuries kind of short circuited some of that, if I'm not mistaken, he was on the roster for both of the Super Bowl teams. I, I think if, if memory serves, he didn't play in the 07 Super Bowl against the Patriots, but did play in 2011, or I might have that flipped around. Uh now you got me questioning it. I think you're right. Um, I know okay. he missed one, but it's the fact that he kept Tom Brady from two more Super Bowls is why <laughs> he's made my list. Uh, I always love rooting for an indie kid anyway, but the fact that he was able to do, I mean, I don't think he ever made it a, a, a Pro Bowl, but he was uh, a damn good D lineman. And yeah, he kept Brady from two rings. So I will, I, I'll give your flowers to you all day, every day, just that even though that's a level of hatred that is probably a little too petty, I don't care. He, he makes my list. I mean, he ended up with 38 and a half career sacks um, and was an unbelievable college player. He was a two-time All-American at BC. Yeah. So he really did. I mean, he, he you're right. He wasn't a Pro Bowl player, but, you know, he had a nice, long, almost a decade-long NFL career. He, he kind of fell just under that threshold. And I'm totally cool with with that, with the Patriots thing. Yeah, hate, hate <laughs> on, man. That's perfect for me. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Uh, Reggie Wayne at number five, George McGinnis at number four. Who do you have? Top five favorite athlete from Indianapolis or just Indianapolis athlete of all time. Who do you got at number three? I really struggled with ordering the top three because I think any one in my top three could be number one. It's like one and, A, B, and C. Yeah, kind of, but I didn't want to cop out on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Um, number three, because I, I just feel like he his legacy here is obviously very 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 strong but since he hasn't spent much of his post playing career being involved here i had less of an issue putting him number three um a guy that i hated growing up so you can probably guess who my number oh, three where are we going uh the great number 31 reggie miller yeah number three yeah, on baby. my list uh but but another guy kind of like reggie wayne who wasn't from here but got it and and he personified the underdog mentality of what's still ingrained in Indianapolis sports. Like this is just how fans are here. They love to be overlooked and you know, the skinny gangly, this, this dude's not going to do anything. Right. And, and yet right. he's running off a screen and dropping 40 on you. Like no problem hitting three balls right in your eyeball. So um, he was just a killer. Uh, it, you can have all of the physical and athletic gifts in the world, but, you need to have the mentality too. And Reggie's mentality was just special. And, and even growing up a rabid Knicks fan as a 13 year old in 1995, um, Ewing's famous missed finger roll and ding the dong, peak. the witch is dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was, I was crying, um, you know, that night, but I, I cried for like three days after that. To this day, it's the worst sports moment of my, my fandom even though I'm not really a Knicks fan much anymore. Um, you know, I always respected the fact that Reggie, when, when the lights were brightest, he always showed up. I, I am disappointed, though, I'll, I'll be honest, Cash, that um, 
and, and it, you know, he's got his own life, right? He's got his film stuff. He's got the NBA on, on, uh, you know, the broadcasting and college basketball even. So I get it. And it's probably unfair of me to dictate what another man does with his life. I do wish that Reggie would be a little more, um, would show his face here a little bit more often and sure. be a little bit more involved in, in Indianapolis, I don't know, causes or something like that. You know, Peyton Manning comes back every year for the, the Peyton Manning Children's Hospital, and, and that's like a lasting piece of his legacy here, where at, and he has the statue. Whereas I feel like, you know, outside of the mural um, over off of Mass Ave, th there's not really much that you're reminded that Reggie Miller is such a huge figure here. You know what I mean? And I think part of that is, is his fault. I would agree with that. I've always thought it was kind of odd that he wasn't more involved because it seemed like in 05 when he retired, it was kind of like, Indy, I love you. Sorry we didn't get a chip. I'll talk to you later. And he was back. Yeah, to 100%. Now. And I think part of that, I've kind of reckoned with that a little bit as the years have gone by because, you know, I'm, you know, we're not kids anymore. So it's not kind of a hero worship anymore. It's kind of like, oh, that's just another dude that I really liked sure. growing up. You know, Peyton, I think, is fueled by being the white knight. He's the savior. He's the hero. He's the quarterback. He's the statue. He's the hospital. Reggie got fueled by the hate. He got fueled by Nick's haters, not necessarily as much as the Hoosier love. Not that he didn't love Hoosier support. I really think he genuinely enjoyed the, the fans and, you know, the, the Market Square Arena going into the field house and the whole lore of it. Um, I just feel like he's got, you know, when you hear interviews of Mark Jackson and and former teammates, Larry Bird, when they talked about playing with him and against him, he was just an odd cat. He was kind of a loner. He kind of did his own thing. So just knowing that that's his personality, I get it. Um, I just don't think, I think he's cut from a very different cloth than, than Peyton is or was. Uh, so I, I, I understand it. That's still not going to say, uh, I'm not going to say it doesn't bum me out that he's not more of a uh, physical or supportive presence in Indy, you know? One last thing in his defense, um, whatever happened, and, and I don't know if we ever really found out what the details were or we'll ever really know, um, the house fire, whatever year that was, 96 or 97, the arson, yeah. um, I, I think that always stuck with him, um, fairly or unfairly. That and, and, you know, when somebody tries to burn your house down and you believe that it's race-related and it probably, you know, let's face it, it is Indiana, right? Um, you don't want to rule that out. Um, I can understand why he never kind of forgot about that part. But, you know, the genuine love between the sane people in this community and and that was reciprocated by Reggie, Reggie Miller, that's what we really remember. So I, I do think that that was a footnote overall on his legacy here. But I, I think that that was a little piece of um, – you know, not resentment, because I, I don't want to make it into something that it's not. I, I just don't think Reggie Miller ever actually forgot about that particular incident in his time here. Well, yeah, and that's true. I mean, that it just shows that there's complexity to it. There's layers to it. It's not just as simple yep. as nice guy, bad guy, good guy, whatever, you know. So uh, and also before we move on uh, to the next one, uh, just like we mentioned with George McGinnis, maybe he played a couple decades too early. I think we can say the same thing for Re imagine Reggie. In oh, yeah. Flash Brothers NBA, where he can just chuck it with free, you know, no restriction. I mean, dude, I, anyway. All right. Love to 31. I appreciate you and respect you, including him on the list, because I know you absolutely hated <laughs> his to. guts for a long time. Uh, my number three for you is also an Indiana, uh, Indiana Pacer. Um, I think he's a little unheralded for what he did. Um, I was a big fan of his when they were doing their deep playoff runs to uh, take down LeBron and the Heatles. Um, I never really thought that he got the respect he deserved, but it's uh, George Hill. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, Broad Ripple High School yep. and another guy, you know, we talk about it, the underdog mentality, right? Oh, he's an IPS kid. He's skinny. IUPUI, what? He can't play in the NBA. And then he miraculously becomes a first round pick. <clears throat> um, we did a, a, for two seasons, uh, 2012 and 2013, we did a weekly George Hill show where he'd come and kind of like with Reggie Wayne, we did that with three seasons and, uh, George always said the right things. And I do think that he, he deeply loved Indianapolis. I think the problem is cash is that, um, he didn't want to come back here for his pro career. He was very happy in San Antonio. And when that trade happened, it blindsided him and, I never felt like he was fully comfortable being back here with all the pressures of being 
George Hill from Indianapolis. Really? I yeah. never knew that. And I wouldn't have expected that, you know, in my head, you know, when you're a kid with absolutely no NBA uh, future, you know, that's the dream, you know, you want to put, you sure. want to put on the blue and gold. And I never would have considered that. So maybe, yeah, it was kind of built with some tension already coming into it. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm reading into this. So I have no idea. He never told me this. I'm just saying okay. that that was the vibe that I always got. You know what, what I, I compare it to is, um, again, you know, not being from here, if you told me tomorrow that I had to move back to Trumbull, Connecticut, where I grew up, I'd be really upset about it. And it's not because I don't love Trumbull, and it's not because I don't love my high school friends or my sisters in the town over, or I can go to, you know, Marty Kane's Deli and, and grab a sandwich. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm down for all of that, but I, it's not part of my life like that anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, yep. I love Indianapolis. This is my new home, and, and we've made – a life here and I don't want to uproot all of that. And I, I do think, and look, I'm not trying to compare myself to a, a pro athlete who makes millions of dollars. I'm just trying to put it in perspective to some people that, you know, not always does everybody want to go home and, and, and perform in front of people that have known them since they were five and asking for free tickets and, you know, asking for handouts and all of that, you know, That's in San point, Antonio, yeah. he was separated from all of that and he loved Greg Popovich and they had a wonderful relationship Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was hard for him to, uh, to uproot that. And, you know, poor George Hill, it's not his fault that he was traded for Kawhi Leonard. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. that's not, and people blamed him for that because he's not Kawhi. And so, Oh God, we gave up Kawhi Leonard for George Hill. Whereas George Hill was a really capable, solid, reliable, contributing player. And, you know, unfortunately for him, Kawhi Leonard became one of the best players in the league. No, that's very true. Um, and I feel like he, he, if, you know, I'm sure there's some truth to that. If you picked up on it, I, I, I have every, I would have no reason to doubt that. I think he put on a great face and, and did really well for the team and obviously loves his city. I know he's given back, you know, tenfold and uh, shout out to him going to country concerts. Cause I never would have never expected that, you know, Dustin Lynch opening up for Luke Bryan and, there is this giant guy standing there. I'm like, oh, hey, he's a country fan. Who knew? So how, how about uh, this for a little George Hill factoid while we're talking country? Uh -huh. uh, George Hill had, and his dad used to ride horses. Really? Uh, he told a story one time where they were, you know, he grew up um, not, at, not in a great area. I'm, I'm not sure if it was the Meadows or, uh, you know, that, that area east of uh, Keystone, like around 30th and Keystone East over there by Millersville. Yeah. And he told the story one time of his dad and, and he riding horses up Keystone Avenue. <laughs> and if you're if you don't know anything about Indianapolis, I mean, Keystone is like a main thoroughfare. Right. And, and yeah. the speed limit is technically 35. But if you're going less than 55, <laughs> yeah. you know, people are just blowing by you and just picturing, you know, a, a skinny, uh, gangly George, <laughs> you know, 15 years old riding a horse up Keystone. Uh, yeah. The looks that he would get would be hilarious. Well, that makes sense because even over on the east side, you know, I kind of grew up, um, you know, I don't, don't want to disparage anything, but kind of hood adjacent in some areas on the east side. You there, you would see horses like up and down Post Road every once in a while. And you're like, where the hell are these horses yeah. coming from? Like when I picture horse, I picture, you know, farmland or a barn and there's yeah, not Cicero much or around. something, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's the, one of the things I love about India. I, I talked about this on a previous episode, uh, but when you're in Indianapolis or, or central Indiana in general, you're, you're never more than 10 minutes away from being kind of in a ritzy area, kind of in a farm area, kind of in a more hood area. Like it's all, there are pockets pretty close connected. So it makes sense that they would have horses up and down the, the, the urban city streets. Um, all right, man, we are nearing the top. Who do you have at your number two spot? Number two uh, might surprise you because I, th I think probably the assumption is nationally that this person would be number one because they're the highest profile. Um, I actually put Peyton Manning number two. Um, wow. Okay. You know, you can make an argument that he's the greatest player to ever play regardless of position. Certainly you can do that as a quarterback. Uh, he has a statue here for God's sake. So I don't even need to get into the legacy of Peyton Manning. Um, the only yeah. reason that I, I held back a little bit is because Peyton Manning to me is fascinating in the sense that you can make an argument that he has in at least three and possibly now at this point, four different places, huge legacies. And Indianapolis is one clearly because he's viewed as a cult. 
Mm-hmm. He's beloved in Denver. And he was, you know, he, they won a Super Bowl there, not really because of him, but he was on the team. He was the quarterback. Yeah. And so, he, you know, he, he fulfilled that promise when they invested in him and, and really took a chance on him coming off the, the neck and everything that he befell his time here. Yep. But New Orleans, where he's from. Yep. And he is still a massive, massive figure in the state of Tennessee. Yeah. So because he's so uh, public in all of those other places, I've never really viewed him as all the way Indianapolis, whereas the person that I picked number one to me is Indianapolis uh, or, or, you know, viewed that way. So I put, I put Peyton Manning number two on my list. I'm really trying to think of who your number one is now. Uh, Cause I, I, now that I know that you were going with just Indianapolis figures, not necessarily native sons or daughters, uh, Reggie and Peyton would make your top three. So now I'm curious. Number one is how about that guy on Twitter who was like, how could you ever, how could Peyton be a first ballot hall of famer? He was never the best quarterback in the league in any of his seasons that he played. I'm like, clearly you're a troll, but I always wonder if they truly believe that or if they're just a hater or what, because dude, you're an idiot. 2004 when he threw 49 touchdowns it's it's one of the greatest seasons that anyone it's the great one of the greatest individual seasons that certainly any quarterback regardless any individual players had you know it's a lot like Dan Marino Dan Marino in 1984 yeah they didn't win the Super Bowl in 1984 he had one of the greatest seasons that anyone's ever had I mean he was the best quarterback in the league in in 84 regardless of whether he won it or not you know that's the thing that and and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hijack your broadcast here but but when you know you're talking about Tom Brady uh, the thing that always bugged me about Brady is that Brady from t- 2007 to 2014 was far better of a quarterback than he was 2001 to 2005, but he won no championships. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. You know, just cause you won the title doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you were the best player at the position. So M- Manning for many years was the best quarterback um, or, or had the best season in the NFL. Obviously only twice did it end up with him, you know, riding off with a Super Bowl ring. Right. Man, okay, so Peyton at number two for you. I am. I have a couple of guesses. A couple of them are – I have a couple of guesses. One of them is a joke for who your number one might be. But uh, my number two for you might be a little surprising. Um, but he's my age. He's just a couple months younger than me. Uh, I believe his birthday is Christmas, actually. Um, it's difficult for me to pick because he's a North Central Panther, and I'm a Warren Central Warrior. Uh, but but uh, when I was manager of the girls volleyball teams uh, in high school, when we traveled to North Central, um, he and I would shoot hoops before games, he would kind of help set up the nets for the girls teams and just overall nice guy I wish he would have played with the Pacers there's still a chance he might get signed to a one year deal who knows, uh, but my number two pick is Eric Gordon. Yeah, man. Um, of all, and, and I guess I could only put Greg Oden in this category, but Greg Oden was just so, it it just didn't fit. Like Greg Oden was a high school player who looked like a 40 year old man. So I, I, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like you watch Greg Oden play and it was, there was like almost a level of unfairness to it where you're like, really like this poor kid from Carmel has to try to guard this dude. (laughs) Um, So, you know, kind of putting that in and and obviously the same exact era. So kind of putting that in perspective, you know, Eric Gordon was the greatest normal high school basketball player that I've seen in my 15 years here. I remember going to a holiday tournament at Hinkle where um, Jeff Teague was playing for Pike. Uh, Eric Gordon was there for uh, North Central. There was another, I don't think it was Matt Howard. That was a great class. 07 was an amazing class. Matt Howard out of Connorsville. Yeah. Yeah. Howard Gordon, each one more, uh, Juwan Johnson, Mick Roberts out of Carmel. Yeah, they were all in the same class, and um, and Gordon just – he stole a ball and free reign from half court at Hinkle all the way down and just threw it down, and you're just like, oh, my God. Like, the athleticism, <laughs> uh, his he had an NBA body immediately, and, you know, if he never had the wrist issues, uh, particularly I think it short-circuited his one season at Indiana, and then, right. of course, he had some injury issues with the Clippers and, and early on in his career, which he, he seems to have since kind of ironed out. But Eric Gordon is a great pick and a great dude. Um, I'm a member at the JCC, not Jewish, but I, I still go over there. His house is still across the street. I see his dad all the time, and um, and I know that he used to tear up those JCC courts as well. But, yeah, w- uh, just a quiet, friendly – 
a humble kid from a great family and a, a wonderful representative of it, of this city for sure. His, uh, his mom, uh, Denise was my computers teacher freshman year oh, of yeah? high school. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I don't, I believe she, I think shortly after he was drafted, she retired, I believe, but, uh, yeah, she was a wonderful lady. I would, you know, go back to see her every once in a while while I was still in school. Nicest lady. And uh, I, you just named off all the the murderers row of Indianapolis basketball players from 07. I felt like a thief uh, with my Warren sports card because I for five bucks it was Conley and Odin, it was Gordon, it was Josh McRoberts, it was I yeah. mean uh, Teague and his little brother uh, Marquise. Um, and I think yeah, I went to Kentucky. Yeah, yep. Just unbelievable talent. It really bummed me out that Warren was kind of. Uh, overshadowed by a lot of that talent but it is what it is but there, yes. there was a run i, I want to say oh five ish to oh eight where you had um mcroberts courtney lee from pike who had a long nba career yep. um odin Connolly, gordon each one more gordon hayward um y- you know what i mean it was just uh, jeff teague it was just a it, it was an unbelievable and this city produces top prep, ba- prep basketball talent all the time but it was an unbelievable run, but that 07 class is one of the greatest Indiana high school basketball classes of all time. Um, when you go one through 10 on that list, all of those guys, a lot of them ended up having pro careers. And, and if not ended up having great college ones like, like Matt Howard. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, all right, man, we are at the number one spot so far for you running it back. Number five, you got Reggie Wayne four, George McGinnis, number three, 31, Reggie Miller, number two, you've got Peyton Manning, I don't want to guess in case I, I mean, there's no way I'm right. So I'm going to just let you tell me who your number one is. And I'll tell you who I had my, for, for the you guess. Know, again, this is completely subjective, right? I, I'm not saying that you can't argue that this person is number one, but um, I think not only the importance of his legacy, but the importance of his team's legacy. And there's a street named after him. Um, and the high school is now back into existence um, just west of, of downtown, uh, I put Oscar Robertson number one. Um, you're right. He was born technically in Tennessee, but that Crispus Attucks team and, and, and what they did and what they meant, uh, I don't know if people really understood it at the time, but to uh, the African-American community in this city, um, I, I think that even outshone what he was as a basketball player. And to me, Oscar yeah. Robertson's one of the 10 greatest NBA players of all time. And another guy just like George McGinnis that could play in any era because he could literally do everything. And, you know, averaging a triple double before, you know, it started becoming like a stat padding thing for Russell. No offense to Russell Westbrook, but come on, man. Like it's not even close to the same thing. If you compare eras, how difficult that was to do. And another guy kind of like, I mean, we talked about with, with Reggie Miller, um, you know, that there were some, there were some not so nice things that, that Oscar Robertson, experienced um some some of those never saw the light of day and some of those other ones were public like the fact that i i don't believe that they were allowed to have a championship parade because they were black kids uh in 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 a white city and i I don't think i think he held on to that and you know what honestly i would have held on to that too um sadly he went on to to star at cincinnati i i always part of me wished that he would have stayed here and gone to IU or Purdue or something like that and, and had a great college career, but he, he continued at UC. But, um, you know, I drive by it all the time when I, when I go into the city, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll get off of 65 if I'm not using um, side roads and get off MLK and, and go down past Christmas Attics high school. And there it is Oscar Robertson Boulevard. That's right there. And you think about the dust bowl and, and everything else and the, and the, yep. the history of, of basketball and just, you know, the, the color barrier and, and all of that, that went into that, that very tumultuous time there in the fifties. And um, I, I just think he's, he's such a kind hearted man as well. Soft-spoken. Um, I've had the honor and privilege to interview him a couple of times and um, that's a great. Cool. And, 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 you know, everybody on this list is a great representative of the city. Um, Cause we're talking about the best of the best, but uh, Oscar to me was my number one. So, okay. So I feel like you approach this with more of a, all-time great 
And I think I approach mine with an all, these are just my favorites. <laughs> yes. Because your number one makes sense. I was wondering if you're going to go that route or not. Uh, be, the other guesses I had, uh, the joke one was going to be Wayne Gretzky because oh, yeah. of his That's Indianapolis right. yeah. racer days sure. uh, or day. He wasn't here very long. And uh, a <laughs> couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. So that was my joke guess. But I, if you weren't going to go big O, I legitimately thought you might go, uh, especially with what you said about Reggie and Peyton, uh, Robert Mathis, um, underdog, blue collar, shows yeah. up to work, an absolute terror. Uh, he's he's probably, if you take Peyton out of the equation, probably my all time favorite Colt. Um, and he seems to have embraced it as well. Like this is home. Like like when it was even brought up that you know would you go somewhere else? You're gonna move back to Alabama? Or are you gonna coach else? He's like, I'm a Colt. I don't know why you're asking me these questions. And I just as a as a Hoosier kid, I love to hear that. It's like, yeah, man, Indy's great. You of course, of course you want to yeah. stay. No, so. you know, the, I think the difference between Mathis and let's say let's compare them to the other Colts on the list: Reggie Wayne and, and Peyton Manning. Uh, Reggie Wayne and Peyton Manning were always a big deal, and they seemingly from day one were in the public eye. Certainly, Manning is the number one pick, and then Reggie Wayne. It, it didn't take long to realize, hey, this guy's special. Yeah, Mathis to me didn't really emerge as a beloved figure until very late in his career when all of those other guys basically had moved on, I, I guess, outside of Wayne, because uh, Mathis only stuck on about two more seasons out of that. But like once that group with Clark, Sanders, Harrison, Saturday, uh, Manning, Buffet, Brackett, like once that group moved on, that's when Afrini, that's yeah. when you kind of started to realize, hey, wait a minute this guy's been here like 10 years and he's a monster of a player and just a, a really soft-spoken guy. You know, we, we didn't really see Robert Mathis's personality until late. Cause he was, he, he didn't like um, talking to the media and, and public because he's just shy. Um, you know, Southern kid uh, came yep. from nothing, which is great. Uh, he, he, we also did a weekly, I swear that not everybody that we're talking about on here, we did a weekly show with, but <laughs> Mathis, Mathis was another guy. His last season here, we did a weekly show with him. And he told the story of, of um, down in, in Alabama when he was, I think, 16 years old. His mom and family got evicted from their apartment. And he said what stuck with him the entire time was um, sitting on a curb. And they had no idea where they were going to sleep that night. And he turned to his wow. mom and said, uh, you're never going to have to worry about this again. I'm going to make sure of it. I, I'm paraphrasing, but, but something along those lines. And it was just a deeply emotional thing to picture, hey, at 16, I was sitting here. And now as a 36-year-old man, I have generational wealth uh, that I can give to my grandkids. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. of course, his, his mom has since passed, but of course, take care of his mom in, in her later years. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, man, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. Sports are sports, but um, I... I root for people and he was an Same. easy person to root for my uh, I say four years because that's how col how long college is supposed to be. But for a <laughs> stretch of time in my uh, post high school career, the desktop on my laptop, the background was rock 98 at a 45 degree angle. Oh yeah. Rushing the quarterback. He was just the coolest man. I mean, yeah. So if we were doing, if I had done your list, mine were just favorite Indianapolis athletes, just in general, uh, he would have been on my list. But unfortunately, I had, I'm going with native sons here. These are my top five favorite Indianapolis from Indy athletes of all time. For number five, I had Jack Doyle. Number four, I had Matthias Kiwanuka. Number three, I had George Hill for you. Number two, I had Eric Gordon. And number one, we won the state championship all four years of my high school career, 03, 04, 05, 06. Uh, he played for the Indianapolis Colts. He scored a touchdown in a preseason game against the Cincinnati Bengals. He spent some time on the Titans uh, practice squad. Unfortunately, did not get much more of a chance than that. But Darren Evans, number 32 for the Colts, all number right. four for the Warriors, yeah. my number one favorite Indianapolis athlete of all time. Darren Evans is a great dude, uh, and he had – a fantastic college career at Virginia tech. I think yes. he was like their orange bowl MVP. One of those years. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and we actually, Oh my God, I can't believe that we're going to do another. Um, 
we did a weekly show with uh, with cosplayers in, 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 in get this cash 2011 season. OK, you you know what I'm talking about. But for people that don't know, in 2011, the Colts were a disaster. It was when Manning had his neck thing. Yep. They started 0 and 13. And it was my first year with Jake on on WNDE. And we got hired that August. And two weeks later, Manning has the surgery. You know, he's done for the year. And my boss goes to me, the program director at the time, Buzz Casey, and he's like, hey, we need to do a Colts player show, but we don't, we can't just do one guy because nobody will agree to it. So we need to get a rotation of players in. And I'm like, Buzz, the Colts are going to be terrible, man. Like, we're not going to get anybody to agree to do this. So we reached out to a bunch of people, you know, Dallas Clark, Gary Brackett, we're all on the roster. No, 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 no. Everyone's saying no. Darren Evans ends up on the practice squad. And I'm like, well, you know, with the hometown tie, maybe he'll be interesting. Let's get Darren Evans. So Darren Evans actually came to that show for a couple of weeks and God bless him. They were 0 and 8, 0 and 9. And he'd be there. And, uh, and a great, a great dude who was really appreciative of, I, I think he deep down had an understanding that this was probably about as far as it was going to go for him. Mm -hmm. But there was a, I mean, there's a level of accomplishment just to get on an active roster is really, really difficult to do, especially at his position and at his size and everything. But man, uh, if you're making a list of the, the greatest Indiana high school football players in any era, he's on it. Um, and, and those Warren teams were unbelievable. Yeah. Like I said, I felt like a thief my entire time in high school, not paying very sometimes free, uh, but paying very cheap tickets to go see them play football and then to see the basketball teams that were in our, the MIT conference. Uh, Darren is just the coolest guy. He's super nice. I had gym with him. I had math classes with him. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's very soft-spoken, but if you get a dodgeball in his hand, <laughs> the red marked faces I remember seeing in freshman gym when he was on our, we played dodgeball together, but uh, couldn't have been nicer. I was, I remember being, I was, uh, sitting, I was at ball state watching the 2007 NFL draft, uh, or sorry, it might've been the 08 draft. I can't remember now, uh, what year it might've been, but, uh, watching the draft, Darren has declared for the draft and the Colts in a later round, take Delon Carter from Syracuse, this yeah. fumble machine, supposed bowling ball back. And I'm like, what are you doing? Take Darren. And he ended up getting, you know, signed undrafted. And I was always pissed that they like, give him a chance. Just give him the rock, give him the rock. And then when he scored that touchdown, I don't care if it's a preseason game. When he scored that touchdown on the Bengals, it was just, that was the loudest my house has ever been. Um, I'm glad he was able to make it to the NFL. Super nice family, uh, you know, beautiful kids. So a sentimental pick for you for my top five uh, for my favorite athletes of all time. Uh, running it back, Derek Schultz. We've got Reggie Wayne at number five, George McGinnis, number four. We've got Reggie Miller, 31, at number three, Peyton Manning, number two, and number one, the big O, Oscar Robertson. My top five, I've got Jack Doyle, Matthias Kiwanuka, George Hill, Eric Gordon, number one, Darren Evans. Do you have any honorable mentions or ones yeah. that would never make your list? I, I did modern era, so um, if we were just doing all time, Major Taylor, and Oscar Charleston would be two that absolutely would be on any list uh, from being from here. Um, but if we're just talking personal favorites, um, Lance Stevenson would be on my Yo, list. Born uh, ready, baby. Not, yeah. not from here, obviously, but a pacer. And mm -hmm. um, another guy not from here, but um, would be on my list who um, I think for a very brief window may have actually been the most popular cult. Very, very brief window. And a guy that I strongly think should be in the ring of honor, even though I don't think he'll get there because he didn't play long enough, is Bob Sanders. Oh, absolute game record. He's the reason we won the Super Bowl. Yeah. When he came back for that, that last quarter of the season and they could finally stop the run, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of screen you were watching the game on. You saw his biceps bigger than the football. I mean, yeah, dude, good picks. Uh, Bob Sanders, Lance Stevenson, tremendous my I kept mine still local I had a couple of honorable mentions one um, I kind of went back and forth I went with Jack Doyle because he's a Colt uh, but I was going back and forth between him and Zach Martin uh, also a Cathedral okay. Irish yeah. Notre Dame yeah. Irish uh, I met him uh, at a couple of country shows as well very cool oh, we got to make sure Shatard for Martin 
Oh, sorry. I yeah, apologize. Just because people would complain about that. If no, we, that's a good point. With the, with, I, the, with the big rivalry <laughs> between those two. Oh, yeah. there, there's a rivalry between Chittard and... Yeah, uh, just Kadito. a little I never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, my apologies, Indy. But uh, no, he was a very cool guy. Uh, another one, he's, for whatever reason, become more in the political sphere the last year, couple of years. Uh, but Jason Whitlock, uh, another Warren Central alum, his uh, parents owned a, a rib joint there on the east side, Masterpiece Lounge. And there were a couple of times when I'd come home and they would just have, he would kind of put it on Twitter. He'd put it on Facebook like, hey, free ribs, just come hang out. And it'd be him and his family and his old Ball State football buddies, like these big, huge hulking guys sitting there. And I'd be sitting there next to him, just listening to their stories and got to chat with them. Uh, so whatever you think of Whitlock, you know, he can be kind of trollish. He can be whatever he, you know, whatever he does. Um, always been super nice to me. Very nice guy. Obviously no professional career to speak of, but, uh, he was on that 85 championship Warren central team. Uh, and somebody that would probably never make my list. Uh, I actually wear it as a badge of honor that I got to kick him off of a basketball court once, uh, Jeff George, uh, the king of the east side. We had a volleyball tournament. He just came into the gym, started playing basketball with his, uh, he had a couple of buddies with him. And we were like, sorry, sir. Like I knew who he was, but I didn't say, hey, Jeff George. I'm like, hey, sir, sorry, we're getting to get ready to set up for a tournament. And it was kind of like a, don't you know who I, like I'm, I'm here to play basketball. This is my court. I'm like, sorry, you got to go. And like, we got to kick him off. I'm like, yeah, take that, man. Yeah, you know, there was uh, uh, a lot of people had those experiences with Jeff George. What I can report to you uh, is in his later life, he has mellowed out tremendously and become a much better person. And I think he would admit even that maybe he made some mistakes in his youth with all of that. Um, Jeff George also is the most philanthropic person that you would never, ever realize is philanthropic because he doesn't, he, he, he's the kind of person that gets mad if you would mention it publicly, what he's done. Oh, for really? Fortunate. And, and, and I don't think a lot of people know that about him. And I, for no. whatever reason, he prefers it that way. So um, he and, and Jake actually have a, a very close friendship. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of privy to some of that information based on, you know, it, and Jeff and I know each other and all of that too, but um, mm -hmm. because he's so close to a, a close friend of mine, I, I hear some of those things and it changed my perspective on what I thought Jeff George was. Cause kind of like you, I've, I've heard all of those stories, like your personal interaction with him or others, you know, from even as recent as like 10 years ago, have not been so positive, but um, apparently he's uh, he's changed a lot. Well, that's awesome. I had no yeah. idea. Uh, obviously, that's not super well known. So I am very, I feel a little bad now having kicked him off the court. And I didn't bring that glee. up. Yeah, I, I, I didn't <laughs> want to bring that up to, to, to do that to you. I just, you know. No, that's good information to, yeah. to share, though. I think we need more of that than my pettiness. So, uh, <laughs> well, dude, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I know I rattled off some credits at the beginning, but uh, what do you have going on? Where can people find you? You know, give us the rundown. Yeah, so we, uh, after the non-compete ended, um, we uh, linked up with ISC Sports Network and are doing a weekly show, Quarian Schultz, which airs uh, Tuesday nights. You can check it out, iscsportsnetwork.com. We also post the episodes on our YouTube channel. Um, it's on Comcast 81 if you're in central Indiana uh, on 6 p at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays. Um, it's also in podcast form, Spotify, iTunes, uh, anywhere where you find podcasts. Greg Doyle and I have done a, a podcast for about a year and a half called Doyle and Derek via the Indie Star, which I'm real appreciative of. It was my only platform when I was away. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Indie Monthly has allowed me to write whenever you feel like it, which is perfect because <laughs> I, I yeah. feel no pressure at all to, to do anything. But <laughs> basically, once a month, I'll write an article and I also contribute weekly to their uh, Colts recaps, which are just you know, kind of a couple of buddies just joking around and shooting the breeze more than they are like in-depth analysis. But um, yeah, you know, I, 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 I've got my place in uh, a bunch of different spots, but uh, I'm appreciative to, you know, still be covering sports in this great city. And I love the people and uh, I've come to kind of love the, the, the guys that I cover uh, a lot, a lot of good people to root for. And I'm of course appreciative of you for letting me on and wanted to congratulate you on all the success that you've had uh, oh. in your radio career. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It was, yeah. like I said, it was a no brainer when I wanted to start doing the top. I've been doing top fives my whole life. You know, what's your top five this? And I'm sure it drives some friends and family crazy, but 
I always enjoy it. And uh, I really do uh, appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, when you pitched it to me, I thought of John Cusack in High Fidelity um, when he was doing that for all, you know, top, top five, five records, yeah. breakups, top five records or whatever else. So, no, it's a really cool topic. And, um, you know, next time you're in town, maybe after we get this vaccine and everything, we can grab a beer or whatever. Absolutely. For sure.